at Dogfish Head, a batch of beer from grain to glass moves from our grain silo for our bulk barley, and then we transfer it into a, a, a tank called the, the louder ton tank, and then you transfer out the sweet liquid from that into the boil kettle. Uh, this is where you add your spices the same way a chef would. The spice that you're gonna add to your soup at the very least is gonna be hot. Take a smell of that. In the case of most of our ancient ales that we brew, there are additional ingredients added. Most of these ancient beverages were hybrids between meads, which is a fermented honeys, or some of them have uh, fruit. Post-boil, uh, now you're sending that beer through a heat exchanger that brings it from the boiling temperature down to a temperature that yeast can survive in. Post-fermentation, you transfer that beer uh, into a bottling or packaging tank, and now it's time to send that beer to the kegs or bottles and then out into the world for distribution and consumption. We were sort of the first brewery to focus on considering the entire culinary landscape for potential ingredients instead of adhering to uh, you know, modern beer style, militant style guidelines. So right out of the gates we were brewing beers like Raison d'Etre with raisins and beet sugars and chicory stout with coffee and licorice. And when I would take these beers to beer festivals in the mid 90s, I would sometimes get laughed at or brew other brewers would get mad at me saying, hey, you're really screwing with tradition because you're not brewing, you know, German lagers or English pale ales. So that got me on my own researching the more historic beer recipes that were out there. The whole room smells like we just baked dessert in here. I get a lot of gingerbread, cinnamon, cakey. It really helped dogfish remind people that when we're putting these exotic culinary ingredients, we're not being um, disrespectful to more modern brewing traditions. If anything, we're the most traditional brewery in the world.